very interesting concept. It's mind-boggling how much is actually going on in the Bitcoin ecosystem. It's actually hard to keep track of. So I'm, I'm going to be talking about uh, Bitcoin in a two-tier network. Um, where's my presentation? <laughs> Ah, here we go. Perfect. So, I'm, I'm Evan Duffield. I'm a software engineer. I've been programming since I was 15. And as a, a little bit of background, I'm really interested in finance, economics, machine learning, and um, these types of things. So when I got into Bitcoin, it was just fascinating. It captivated my interest. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to tinker with Bitcoin at like a really low level. I wanted to mess with the protocol. And I wanted to test things that you really can only do with your own currency. And so what we've been doing is really adventurous things that you know you could just never get into the Bitcoin project because they're just too dangerous. But with a small little network like this, you can do things because we can be really nimble with what we do. And so what have we been doing? Um, some of the projects have been what we call a two-tier network as opposed to a single-tier network on the Bitcoin network. And then decentralized funding and decentralized governance. So how does that work exactly? Well, if you think of Bitcoin like a job network, I would argue that it's actually the first truly decentralized job network but there's only really one job, and it's mining currently. And so what we did was we added a new job. And we call these, these people master node operators, and they run our infrastructure for us. And basically what we do is we require that they run specific types of hardware, and then we can actually rely on that hardware. So how has it been working for us? And I would say amazingly well. We've added hundreds of these master nodes, which are full nodes, which service the network uh, over the past 12 months. We have 3,400 currently, and about 4,500 4, full nodes, as opposed to the Bitcoin network, which has about 5,800. And so we have a comparable infrastructure to the Bitcoin network, which is pretty amazing because we're about 1 400th of the size. So how do you run a, a, one of these master nodes on our network? Well, all you do is you buy some points. These, these nodes are collateralized, which means that they can't be faked. And all you do then is you configure your whole node, and then you join the second tier. And you get paid. So you get compensated, and you use that money to pay for the cost of the server. And the neat thing about a collateralized second tier is you can do really cool things. Based off of that, that collateral, there's a thousand dash, and that has a public key. And the public key has a private key, which you only know. So you can sign messages to the network. We have a secure communication protocol on the second tier, and we implemented decentralized voting with that. With the decentralized voting... Sorry, can, can you switch microphones to get that one? <laughs> yeah, good to know. <laughs> it, it is on. Okay, so with the second tier, we have a, a collateralized full node network. There we go. That's a lot better. <laughs> now I can hear it. <laughs> and basically, we have thousands of these, these full nodes, and each of them have a thousand dash collateral tied to them. That collateral has a public key and a private key. And so the, the public key is known by the network. The private key is only known by the person running that full node, which is ran as a master node. So what do you do with this? And you can do interesting things, such as implementing decentralized voting. So imagine thousands of these collateralized nodes voting on topics on the network. And then you can do even more interesting things, like you can build decentralized funding. So what if you allocate a piece of the block reward and then you have people that, that are running these nodes voting on where to send the money to? And so you can propose things to the network and get them paid. 
Um, and then you can also govern the network. And you can answer questions pretty much instantaneously about what direction that the network should go in. So here's our decentralized governance and funding system. And we've ha only had this for three months now. And over the three months, we've funded three different conferences, one in Mexico, one in uh, Florida, and uh, one in the Netherlands. And it actually paid for our uh, airfare, paid for the hotels, and things like that. Because the, the people that are promoting the currency or doing work for it shouldn't have to bear the cost of doing it themselves. And this stuff is actually paid directly from the blockchain. Also, we, we bought a new website, uh, dash.org, from the blockchain itself. I think it's actually the first domain to ever be purchased directly from the blockchain. And we fund our business development with this method. So how could you apply something like this to Bitcoin? Well, I think first you've got to imagine what makes the perfect Bitcoin. And I don't know the answer to how the, the Bitcoin developers or the community would want to use this technology, but I just want to open a conversation about, you know, what would it be like if they had decentralized funding and decentralized governance? It, it could be pretty neat. Uh, there's definitely an issue with the full node relationship and the transaction volume that the network is doing. As transaction volumes rise, the full nodes actually fall off. And with a second tier, you automatically fix this issue. Um, so then what else do you get? We, we want to scale the Bitcoin ecosystem, and we want to be able to support millions of mobile devices. So I've, I've come up with a, a couple strategies of, of doing this with uh, a two-tier network. So you want to support millions of these mobile devices, and you could actually do it with a decentralized SPV installation. What if you had all of the second tier nodes running SPV, and then you point a round robin DNS at, at the second tier? And then now you have thousands of them bearing the load of the entire network. And then you could also have decentralized funding like we're using, or decentralized governance. You could probably even implement Bitcoin Lightning in a similar fashion. I was also thinking about uh, governance. What if you proposed the BIPs to the network via the second tier and had them vote on them? So then we would have an instantaneous way of telling how the network feels about individual proposals. And this could be, it's, it's Sybil proof because the, the second tier is collateralized, it's instantaneous, and then the network has a immediate direction that it can go in. They could also have a funding system like we have, and they could actually pay for the, the core development directly from the blockchain. Uh, currently, it's, it's financed by, by grant money, and it used to be financed by donations and from a, a foundation. So I, I could see this as being a, a vast improvement. Uh, here's the, the decentralized SPV idea. All you do is you, you point that round robin DNS at the second tier, and then you have the mobile wallets point at the second tier. And then it should scale because it's thousands of servers. So how would they do this? And I don't really know. They would have to plan and implement it. And these are some of the smartest people I've ever met, so I'm sure they could do an amazing job. Um, it does require that part of the block reward gets allocated for the second tier so that it compensates them. And it requires that part of the block reward would get allocated to decentralized funding as well. And then you trustlessly detect and you pay the, the master nodes that are on the system. And then you should be able to scale rather efficiently. So what's the conclusion? I would say that we should start talking about this and, and see what, what the Bitcoin community thinks about adopting something, something like this on the Bitcoin network. Uh, as a short announcement, we're open sourcing Dash Evolution today, which it's basically what I've been talking about times 100. We want to implement uh, something like a decentralized PayPal on top of our uh, decentralized currency, where you could basically uh, log into your, your mobile wallet and then it would connect to the second tier. 
we would store all of the, the needed information that you use on the second tier encrypted, such as friends lists and things like that. So I could friend somebody, I would send them you know, five of my next public keys to use, they would send me five of their next public keys, and I could literally just click their name, click I wanna send you to dash, and then click send. And I think that's a pretty powerful feature if it's completely network wide. And that, that's the type of stuff that we're, we're building into Dash Evolution. So if you're interested in that, uh, go to dashevolution.com and uh, check out the new papers. Uh, and that's it. Thanks, thanks a lot. Um, I will do, like, try to summarize because all these are very like high level or very complex ideas. But my remarks, and then I will give you the microphone to you so you can correct me or expand, expand my, my assumptions. But um, well, Ivan, uh, you, you have developed a consensus model, uh, a governance model for a cryptocurrency and an incentive model that is govern, governed by that consensus model that you created. And, and I think that's amazing, and that's something uh, Bitcoin is lacking in terms of, um, you know, giving incentives to full nodes that are the auditors of the network. So I think you're finding or trying to find a solution to a very uh, big systemic risk of Bitcoin. So I, I think it's very, very interesting, very exciting to see what you have done. Uh, and, and that consensus also applied to the development and to the evolution of the, your own platform. So that's my summarizing of you, then you will expand on it. Uh, Al Alexandri, you, you were talking about doing a, a secure, like a cold storage using an old smartphone. Uh, not, not smart, no, just an old phone. Airplane mode phone. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and a Nokia 1100, something like that. That's, that's interesting, and uh, the hacker in me craves for it. And, um, and then I, I really like what you're doing, Luis. I, I think you're creating a layer. You're, you're creating a layer on top of the cryptocurrencies layer. And I think th this, layer is, this layered stack concept is growing everywhere. I mean, we are wondering that Bitcoin is just one layer, but we have to build like in the OSI, uh, OSI model, we have to build layers on top of it, whether it's Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies, but stop trying to make Bitcoin do everything. Exactly. I mean, but relying on Bitcoin for what it does well. The ecosystem is growing from down, like in several layers of, of, of protocols. Yes. We started from the top down. Okay? Exactly. With the idea of a strong segmentation, that's why we build all this stuff with plugins. Excellent. So as to Let let me summarize, yeah. then you will talk. Okay. I have the power now. So, as I was saying, I think what is exciting about you is uh, your project is this concept of building a layer on top of the layers that exist and bringing more functionality. And I think you share with Ira this concept of bringing a framework. That's something we will see more and more happening. I mean, building frameworks so others can focus on the last layer that is the one that interacts with users. So I think that's very interesting. Uh, I will dig deeper into your platform. I really like format. And finally, what I is saying, I leave it in my own flesh because Rootstock is the kind of project that everybody wants, everybody loves, but it's difficult to, to fund because I mean, the, the, the business model is a complex one. I mean, there is a business model, but it's a very complex one. So I think we have to find a solution to keep creating the tools that bring more value to the ecosystem, to the decentralized ecosystem, and find a way. So maybe, and that's uh, maybe a long shot, but uh, taking something of what Evan did and put it into what you're building, we can find a solution. So I think, that's my summarizing. I hope it helps the ones that are not so technical because I think it's difficult to grasp all these guys we're talking about. And now you have uh, 30 seconds to wrap up, to correct me, to expand. <laughs> I, I'd like to use my 30 seconds to agree with you. 
<laughs> I think we're all working on uh, very similar things. We're all definitely working towards the same goals, uh, and I'm very excited to. I didn't know about any of your. I've known about Dash a lot for a while, but I've learned a lot more, and I'm just excited to to work more with you guys. Uh, we're we're making it happen. So. It's <clears throat> it's been interesting meeting everybody because I've I found the same project being ran by different people multiple times. So we're all after the same thing, just in completely different ways. And I think now is the time that you figure out the best possible way to do it, and then we follow that path. And I, I think that's really the end goal. Yeah, I, I think we're reaching the end of the beginning, where the infrastructure will be completely ready. And uh, we're very, very close now. And, uh, and it's still, this is something I used to talk uh, in, back in 2010. I mean, people thought I was talking about like uh, Farmville money. And still, th that's what the public thinks we're talking about. Farmville money, you know, we buy a new house for Farmville. They still don't understand the, the military grade cryptography and the infrastructure that's being built silently uh, over these years. Uh, okay, I agree with you. Basically, what uh, we had in mind was to build something to enable a strong segmentation in order to give each uh, possible user a custom-tailored solution, and not, by, not done by ourselves, but letting other people, by reusing this component, to find niche of user interfaces or functionality that any segments in the world can, can, can use, basically. So we, we build from the top down until we find the protocols that we need uh, down there. We find kind of an empty space in the ecosystem. Okay, thank you very much. A big applause for the panel. <laughs>